Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhousehomemoon.com and today I'm gonna make three in-home date night dinner recipes to show you for some wonderful date night ideas with you and your spouse. For me and Luke, we do get to get out. Uh, we have a babysitter come over. A lot of times once a week, it's actually just my sister. And we get to get out and go to a restaurant or do whatever we want, which is wonderful. We usually always bring Theo along. But some of our favorite times together are just in-home date nights because we can put the kids to bed early, give them something really easy for dinner, and then I can put on some music and cook something that is really delicious just for the two of us. Sometimes something that maybe is a little bit more expensive or takes a little bit of extra effort, but you're just making it for two people and then you can eat it, take your time. You're not out in public so you don't have to worry if the baby gets fussy or if the place is crowded, afterwards you can watch a movie, whatever. It is actually the way to go as far as date nights. So if you feel discouraged that maybe you don't have childcare and you really want to have date nights, in-home is for sure the way to go. Get some special food, cozy up, and enjoy a night in the house, especially when it's cold outside in winter. Get a fire going if you have a fireplace or whatever. Let's start by making one of my favorite things. This is actually something I'm just gonna throw together and that is a creamy sauce. So I'm gonna do a chicken with a creamy sauce. I'm gonna serve it with some pasta and add maybe some herbs and spinach and garlic and onion and make it delicious. I'm gonna start by salting two chicken thighs. I'm just gonna make this for two. Also gonna grab my pepper grinder and do some freshly cracked pepper. Then I'm going to get my cast iron skillet heating over high heat to make it nice and hot so I can give this chicken a sear. On the other side of the stove, I have some water I'm bringing to a boil. I'm gonna heavily salt that and add my penne pasta. After I get the chicken all seared, I'm going to whip up the sauce, which is gonna be a delicious and flavorful combination. Garlic, onions, herbs, and cream. a little butter and olive oil going in the skillet. We're going extra indulgent, okay? I'm just gonna do a little pasta because this is just for me and Luke. And we're not gonna do a whole, a whole box of pasta. Good sear, it's a nice color. This works great with bone in or bone leg. like to add just a touch of wine. I have a dry farms wine here. This just really helps with anything stuck on the pan to deglaze it, make nothing stick. I don't really want my onions to burn and my garlic to burn. I just want them to get nice and caramelized and loosened and get all of those bits of seared chicken up from the pan and into the dish. Add some fresh parsley spinach. I'm also going to add some fire roasted tomatoes. Could add fresh tomatoes if it's in the summer and they are seasonal. Another really great option would be sun-dried tomatoes. I actually, that's what I wanted, but I couldn't find them at the store. Green in here. And then I'm just gonna get some salt and pepper to taste. I'm gonna add some fresh Parmesan in there. It really gives it some delicious flavor when it melts in there. This in here to cook the rest of the way with a lid on. And I'm gonna serve it up over some pasta.
The next thing on my list I'm gonna make is steak and shrimp. Date night is a great time to bring out the more expensive foods that you don't make all the time. I do a lot of ground meat, I do canned salmon, I do lots of chicken. Don't do steak very often for the kiddos. One, because it's difficult for them to chew, so this happening after they go to bed is perfect. Also, it's expensive. A couple of nice steaks can cost 40 bucks or more, depending on sourcing and things like that. But for date night, it's perfect, and quite honestly, I love to splurge on things like that because if you go out and get a meal at a restaurant and you get steak, you'll be spending $40 a plate. So having it in the comfort of my home where I can control the seasoning, I can add all of the herbs and the garlic and more salt if I want to and just make it delicious is right up my alley. So to do this, I'm gonna start by making up a garlic butter. I'm melting about a stick of butter over really low heat, adding minced garlic and parsley and then putting that in the fridge to hang out. You can do this well in advance. You can do this days in advance. It's actually nice to have herb or garlic butters on hand for all times, but it's especially delicious for this. Once that has had some time to marinate, now if, if it doesn't, that's okay too, it's time to cook the steaks. So I'm just going to salt and pepper my steaks. This evening I have a couple of ribeyes. I'm gonna get my skillet really hot and give them a nice sear. Now this is obviously also delicious for grilling outside. Since it is the middle of winter, I'm just gonna do them inside. I like to make sure I don't overcook my steaks. It's really important to me that they are done medium or medium rare. That is my flavor preference. And so my biggest goal is to not overcook them. After they are done, I'm just gonna remove them, set them aside, and slather them with my delicious garlic and parsley butter. Next, in that same skillet, I am going to add some more of my garlic butter and cook these shrimp. They don't take a whole lot of time. They just need to be pink and done. And I'm just gonna serve this next to some asparagus. Now, asparagus is way better in season, but when it's not in season, frozen is the way to go. I'm gonna add a little olive oil, salt and pepper, and then bake them in the oven. The last idea I'm going to show you is for a more casual date night, and that's street tacos. We love tacos, and home is the best place to have them because no matter where we go, at least in our area, maybe in different parts of the country, you're able to get better tacos, but they just don't have all of the toppings that I want. I want red onion, cilantro, pico de gallo. I want some fresh. I really like fermented jalapenos. Good luck getting that at a restaurant. We have them on hand here. So making them at home is definitely the way to go. I'm gonna start by chopping up some steak really fine. I have skirt steak here. And then I'm just gonna add it to a skillet with some oil, add some onions, salt, pepper, a little fresh lime juice, and just cook it until it is nicely seasoned and done. And then I'm gonna serve it with some Mexican rice. I'm gonna start this by adding a cup of rice, a diced onion, three or four cloves of minced garlic, about a tablespoon or two of butter to a saucepan and just give it all a stir until it develops a little bit of color and flavor. Next, I'm gonna add two cups of water. You could also use broth if you have it on hand. That definitely makes it more flavorful and add some additional nutrition. Add the lid and allow that to cook. Next, I'm gonna add in some tomato sauce, some fire roasted tomatoes, green chilies, and a little bit of cumin and chili powder and then some salt and pepper to taste. For the corn tortillas, I like to brown them in a little bit of butter. It gives them some color and flavor in a cast iron skillet. Street tacos, it's all about the toppings. So like I said, I have my fermented jalapenos. I do have a tutorial here on my YouTube channel and on my blog on how to make those. It's really simple. Essentially, you just make a salt water brine and allow them to sit at room temperature, submerge under the brine for a few days. We are still eating the jalapenos from our garden that we fermented, was it August, September maybe? 
and they are still serving us so well with all Mexican dishes. They're also amazing in chili. They really take it up a notch. Obviously the kids don't like them, but we do. Cilantro, red onion. Now this just makes a wonderful casual date night. It's one that you wanna, it's one that you might just wanna take straight into the living room. Don't light the candles, just take it in the living room, sit on the couch, kick back, and watch a movie. One of our favorite things to do. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed these three date night dinner ideas. You might be thinking about something like this for Valentine's Day if you can't get a sitter, or if you just prefer not to go anywhere, which is what we are finding ourselves more and more wanting to do. It's just so nice, especially with the baby, to just stay in, make your own food, which my husband says is always better. Now, I personally like what other people cook for me, that's great, but it is delicious whenever you can control the seasonings. You can add those fresh ingredients that you might not be able to get elsewhere, source the healthier local ingredients all in the comfort of your own home. As always, if you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.